I upgraded to a Wahoo Kicker and my FPT went down. In this video, I'll give a quick tour of my indoor training setup, my pain cave, some recent upgrades, and how one of those upgrades lost me all of the training gains and more from my recent Zwift training program. Stick around to the end to find out what happened. Oh, and I know that some of the cycling asshole arati find the term pain cave triggering. So I'll continue to use it. I'll also try some terms of my own, starting with what grotto and sweaty cleft. A quick summary of my cycling prowess. I'm 43, ride road bikes mainly, live in the Midlands, UK, near the Peak District. Strava tells me I ride 4,000 kilometers a year. I'm better climbing than on the flat, I like cycling a lot, but I'm by no means a machine. Any more than five to six hours in the hills at a steady pace is about my max. And this is my indoor training setup. Welcome, this is where the magic happens. By day, this is where I undertake the home-based element of my real job. By night or the weekend, a window into the cycling metaverse. And yes, I sit on a birthing ball. Having an indoor cycling setup that is actually indoors as opposed to in our damp, dilapidated garage is a novel development in 2022 and one I've been very pleased with. My indoor cycling app of choice. I'll start with the software bit of my setup first because I don't envisage that changing for the foreseeable. I've decided to base my indoor cycling training and increasingly my life around Zwift. I've not fully downed the Zwift Kool-Aid, but I've definitely had a few slurps. I'll save my why Zwift thesis for a future video. I currently run Zwift on my desktop PC, old school, and connect it to my devices and sensors via an Ant Plus dongle plugged into a USB port. I've got Zwift set up automatically to sync workouts, rides, whatever we call them, to Strava. It also syncs to training peaks, but that's largely for show. So that's the software brain. What about the engine? Aside from the immense respiratory whoopee cushions in here. The Indoor Trainer V1. My MVS minimum viable setup started with a wheel on dumb trainer, the Elite Chrono Fluid that I've owned for many years. It doesn't measure and broadcast power. It can't be controlled. In fact, it doesn't do anything except offer resistance to the rear wheel rested upon it. Like its owner, it's not a smart trainer. However, the Elite still works with Zwift because the latter can estimate power by using the output from my speed sensor and discombobulate it against a speed power curve that they've stored for this trainer. And yes, this is a stages power meter crank. No, it doesn't work. And no, I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, the Zwift slash Elite power estimation algorithm along with other factors, disqualifies me from competing in the eSports World Championships. But it's good enough to track performance over time and, as we'll see, fool me into thinking I'm fitter than I am. I'll come on to the trainer upgrade later in the video. A quick word on entertainment. You might think Zwift is engrossing enough, but obviously not in my case. I'm as addicted to constant stimulation, mental, physical, rhetorical, and perineal as the next sheeple. My mildly nerdical two monitor screen setup means I can have Swift running on one and YouTube on the other. A constant rotation of old sportive cyclist videos, of course. To avoid blasting out the volume so I can hear it over the trainer, I use these wholly inappropriate Jabra noise cancelling headphones. Who knew you could sweat from your ears? So I need new headphones if you have any suggestions. My recent pain cave upgrades. The initial 2022 indoor setup comprised the aforementioned Elite, ha, non-smart trainer, an Ant Plus dongle, and a dust sheet on the floor. The first Monty reward was the purchase of a proper training mat, which I unlocked after riding three times on Zwift and proved to myself that I enjoyed it. The mat is a lifeline one from Wiggle and a rod hull of a lot cheaper than the Wahoo branded one. It does a good job of protecting my knife wooden floor. I did most of my initial training program without a fan until I realized this was probably impacting my performance in harder sessions. This is less of an upgrade, more a retrieval. 
of an old fan that we had in our loft. It's not ideal, I can barely feel it, so another item to replace ahead of my next pain cave tour. Next in this list of Cadence cabin upgrades comes the big dog, so I present to you my new Wahoo Kicker Smart Trainer. Not long into my first Swift training program, I hit upon the great and entirely justifiable to my wife idea of rewarding successful completion with the purchase of an expensive smart trainer. You may question the calibration of this significant treat against the modest challenge of riding my bike somewhat consistently for six weeks and I will choose to ignore you. A quick summary then of the Wahoo Kicker. It's a smart trainer, so the resistance is controlled by Zwift. If I ride uphill, it gets harder to pedal and I need to change gear. In erg mode, the trainer changes resistance to precisely match the workout. It's direct drive, no rear wheel required. My chain spins the cassette attached to the kicker. It's a solid unit. I can ride in or out of the saddle and it feels very stable. Goes without saying that a rider like me isn't going to tickle the leg bazooka power levels this trainer can handle. It's not cheap. This bad boy set me back 880 pounds, but for six weeks of moderate effort doing something I like anyway, that seems like a fair reward for my hard work. And finally, it's accurate measuring power to within plus minus 1% of reality. My reality, as it turns out, is disappointing. I'll do a video on the Wahoo Kicker specifically, a review of sorts in due course. Make sure to subscribe to see it. In fact, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a like and then subscribe. YouTube loves that shit. When upgrades mean more upgrades. In addition to the whole smart trainery controlling resistancy thing, which is obviously great, the kicker's arrival here has made the moving of the setup to face the computer for each session impractical. The Wahoo kicker is heavy, certainly, to this weak torsoed humanoid, and thankfully it's unnecessary. My Amp Plus dongle, also the nickname for my penis, now has no problem picking up the more powerful signal being given off, is that the term, by the kicker. So now it stays in one place at the side of the room, not encroaching on my home office setup. And it faces the TV, so I've started casting the Zwift display from my computer using a Chromecast. It's not ideal, there's a noticeable lag and frequently the connection drops out. I use this as an excuse for whenever my performance disappoints. One solution may be to get an Apple TV to run the whole Zwift setup, but that's a topic for another video. The new orientation of the trainer and the lack of any handy nearby services to put stuff on, let's ignore this windowsill, meant I had to invest Yes, invest in a dedicated trainer desk. I considered momentarily the Wahoo One, very momentarily as it's expensive and there's only so much play money generated by my online cycling YouTube and bloggery. So again, it was back to Wiggle and the Lifeline version, which I found very good. It was easy to assemble and it feels robust in use. It has handy USB ports for my charging adventures, a standard plug socket, for the fan and a bottle holder in easy reach. There are also slots for propping up my phone or tablet should I feel either needs a nice shower of sweat. I can even use it as a standing desk for my real work should my buttocks get too chafed by the birthing ball. So that's the setup as it currently stands. No doubt other upgrades will follow. I'll video document if any of them are sufficiently interesting. How Wahoo lost me power. But how, you ask, did this super duper new training setup cause me to lose power and render all of my training program gains null and void. Fine, you got me. The kicker hasn't reduced my actual power. It's just provided me with a more accurate measurement of it. And given it's well below what the Zwift plus elite algorithm had estimated, my ego has taken a beating. I gave more detail in my first Zwift training program video, but my initial untrained FTP, as measured by Zwift on the elite trainer, was 197 watts. This increased to 227 watts by the end of the six week program, still on the Elite. I then set up the kicker and tried it out with a random Zwift workout based on my new FTP. It did not go well. I couldn't hit the numbers, it was so much harder than it should have been. I think I knocked down the intensity by many percentage points just to get it done. My memories blurred by the raw emotions, anger, 
regret, confusion, tainted love, whatever, it must have been sufficiently obvious that I needed to remeasure my FTP. So I did four days after the last one. The result, a diminutive 192 watts, a headline loss, at least to this monkey mind, of 35 watts in less than a week, and a net net loss of five watts over the whole training program. My power to weight ratio back below 2.8. Brilliant. Is there any upside to this tale of woe? Putting a positive spin on it, at least I know where I am. I'm no longer subject to the Zwift plus dumb trainer accuracy of plus minus 20%. My workout efforts are now properly calibrated. And now I'm the owner of a Wahoo Kicker. I can compete in the eSports World Championships which is something. And that's it from me. I've got future upgrades to the sweaty cleft what grotto planned. If you want to see those videos, make sure you subscribe. I've been Monty, this is Sportive Cyclist, and I'm off to fiddle with my Amp Plus dongle. And this time, of course, I'm in my penis. <laughs>